Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Three Men in the Football podcast. Hello, lads. Hi, lads. Simon, Thomas, how are we? Hi, boys. How's it going? It's going very well. All good? We all having a good week? Yeah, it's half term, so lots of golf. It's, it's gone really well. Yeah, I'm recovering from uh, from COVID, so... Uh, you look uh, pale. <laughs> yeah, we all look pale. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, it was rife in our family. So I think Thomas was the only one who hasn't got it because he's got some weird blood that, that can't catch COVID. Um, he just oh, looks no. sick, sick in the sick in the head, maybe. Um, so I'm I'm excited about this one. We've got uh, a mate of ours, Philip McGuinness, coming on, who is a is a, a local actor uh, who has been in a, a number of different things. Really good lad, Everton supporter, a good long time mate of Darren's. Uh, and has been watching the podcast since the start, which is which is brilliant. Um, so this should be fun, shouldn't it, Daz? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm his inspiration, whatever he does in life. So uh, <laughs> I know that. He, no, he doesn't. I think that's the secret. That's why it works. Yeah, he's a great lad, uh, good, honest lad. Known him for a number of years now, and uh, it'd be great to get him on. See what he has to say. I'm really looking forward to it because I'm thinking that might be a career that I want to want to step into one day. <laughs> So I get some tips off him and see where you know, see whether it's the right move for me. Oh my god, I, 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 I don't know I where don't to go. No, I don't. I don't know where to go. Well, this should be even more fun than we thought it'd be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's right, see let's what happens. Him, let's get him on. See what he's got to say. Hello, Phil, and welcome to uh, the Three Man of Football podcast. How are you doing, mate? Hello, mate. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a big fan, so uh, I've been watching all of them, and it's it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, the great what have you got on? Giving Thomas a heart what have you got on? A little, a little bit of history just for you, Thomas. There you go. You look like you've got man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got on? You're giving me eyes. Genius. Uh, Thomas, that's a yeah. different channel you normally phone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Babe station, I think it's called. <laughs> I had to, I had to pull this out, just a special one. This is one close to my heart, just for that you, Thomas. Absolutely brilliant. The best thing about this is now Thomas won't be able to talk for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I'm struggling already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! All right, so for those who uh, who don't know you, Phil, you're a uh, you're a mate of Darren's and now a mate of ours. Um, yes. Uh, a uh, local actor. Um, you're our actor friend. Darren wants to be our actor friend and tries to be our actor friend, but you're our real actor friend. Can right, I just okay. say, before we go any further, Thomas has took me dad, <laughs> and now you're taking one of my best mates. What's going on in this show? Uh, it's brilliant. I love it. You just open doors for people, Dad, and that's what it is, mate. You know I'm what? A that's, that's a I'm a dormant. Yeah. People yeah. steal his family, his mates, his stockmates. <laughs> <laughs> hey, too far, side. <laughs> so, Phil, today we will get into uh, talking about the fact that you are a massive Everton fan. And, yeah. and we're also going to get you involved in analysing the games from the weekend as well. Uh, we think right, that would okay. be interesting getting a Blues perspective. Uh, because, mm -hmm. as you know, Thomas is possibly the most bitter red you're ever likely to meet. I haven't so, noticed, but... Yeah, oh, cool. I'm not I'm not bitter. <laughs> I may be biased. I'm not bitter. <laughs> That's different, yeah. Simon. Oh, I didn't it? notice Phil's got red headphones on. Hey, mate, just th these ones were just to ease it up for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, Si, if Phil's analysing the games, is this a four-hour podcast? Do I need yeah. to get some sort of the buffet sorted. To be honest, mate, I, I was thinking before, we're bad enough at fill into the equation. We could be here for a while. <laughs> I said to the missus before, she said, how long do you think you're going to be? And I was like, well... We've got Philip McGuinness on, so I'll see you at some point tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil, for those who, uh, who don't know you, um, you, it's brilliant. You sent us over some information earlier or yep. um, yesterday uh, about um, what you've done. And obviously, we've been introduced to some of this through Darren because yep. you know that he lives on your successes, don't you? <laughs> Mate. Mate, I, I've told him when I, when I get to uh, the golf pro, like as the celebrity, he's me caddy. So do you know what I mean? He's there. Oh, you laugh now, lad, but you want me autograph, won't you? <laughs> well, the best thing about it, the best thing was when you did the golf advert the other week. He yeah. was so jealous. He wasn't happy at all. Mate, he, he's, he's my teacher. I, I, I've just got the face, unfortunately, so it's that. 
So, uh, so we've, I've, uh, I've watched some of your show reels and then obviously we follow you on social media and stuff. So we've seen quite a bit of your stuff now. Um, but some of the absolute classics that I've seen that I had to get out was the funniest one, I think, is Sir Isaac Newton on BBC. Oh, oh mate. Yeah. <laughs> I can't watch it without pissing myself laughing. It's absolutely brilliant for anyone oh, who hasn't you. seen it. Just go onto YouTube and type in Philip McGuinness, and this will be one of the first ones that come up. But the, the fact that you get into character so much is absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you, mate. On, honestly, I was, I was absolutely really nervous, put it that way, because, like, the script was huge. Yeah. And so, like, I didn't have for that long, so I was going over and over and over again. And then I finally got there on the day, and it was all auto cue, so I didn't even have to <laughs> learn. <laughs> Mate, I hammered that script, but it, it probably paid off in the end. So, Phil, so maybe, we, maybe we, what we want to do, Daz, is get Phil to give Thomas some tips on yeah. auto cue for when he's doing the war. <laughs> Just give Tom an auto cue and, and go with it, see what happens. Imagine how much <laughs> off script he'd go, though. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I fancy myself as a bit of an actor. And now that we've got, now that we've got an actor, mate, and hey. a friend of the show, we, you know, he could open doors for me. <laughs> I've got skills. Mate, mate, do you know what, Thomas Wright? I've been listening. I, I think you've got your sellable, to be honest with you. I mean, I, know, I could, sellable. I could Phil, quite Phil, easily see you walking thoughts. around Hollyoaks Village <laughs> or even the Rovers Return, and you're just there having a little pint in the corner, mate. I, I, I no, he can, be, he can be the next Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thomas, my windows I, need to. Oh, Jimmy Corkill. Jimmy Corkill, yeah. <laughs> well, there's some of the classics as well, so. Um, when you when when people see that you're on and they have a look at some of your stuff as well and they see your stature, you're six foot four. Yeah. Um, you're like a uh, a string of piss. To be yeah, fair. I am. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that was brilliant on the list of 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 roles that you played is Rodney in yes. Del Blue and Rodney. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you were writing a list of the things that you were played, that would be in there, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, mate, honestly, like, I, it was weird because when I was a kid, I was a massive Only Fills and Horses fan. And there used to be, like, a magazine with, like, um, a DVD, each one. And it was it must have spent about 800 quid getting all these DVDs, right, honestly. <laughs> and I said to me, I said, Mum, one day it's going to pay off. And then, like, roll forward, like, 10, 15 years. I got this part, and I was like, Mum, I told you. So it, it was brilliant. Well worth the investment, mate. So Absolutely. That's, that's a brilliant role to play, though, because he's a great character, isn't he? Oh, it, oh, it was it was amazing to be honest with you. I've got to work with like these three guys, and honestly, particularly me and John Tierney, who was who played Dell, we were just like brothers. Honestly, we travelled all over the UK. We went to Ireland, uh, bits of Scotland, like Strathpeffer, uh, Wales, um, England. We came up to uh, the Floral Pavilion. Honestly, mate, we got to go everywhere, and it was just it was a joy to be part of Phil, that. It was brilliant. Phil, just on that, was he the better brother people liked? He was, mate, yeah. Yeah, he said, he's really good. <laughs> you again? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, what role are you playing? <laughs> yeah. But then the other one, which, which uh, I, I love because it, it's with uh, an actor who, who I, I really like, is the uh, playing Spud in uh, Being Keegan. Oh, with Stephen Graham. Yeah. yeah. Stephen Graham. I mean, what an actor he is. Oh, oh, mate, honestly, like, I got this part, I went in for this audition, and I only had one line. And she was like, just improvise around it. I was doing all this impro. And I could never get that line right. And eventually I managed to get it. She said, you've got the part. So then we went on to, to the set and we were, we were actually by Anfield. And then the part of the scene is basically you could like spit on this Kevin Keegan card and like throw it at him. So I went up to stay and I was like, like stop, stop, want, I, stop, stop. Stay down. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we've quickly changed. got mates, you, you know changed. what I mean? Yeah, I'm the one who knows everyone. He comes on the show, <laughs> name dropping, more than this. Means Darren, it's just to make you feel a little bit better, we only invited him on, just in case he, know, he is good mates with Stephen Graham, because we'd love to get him on here. Get him on, yeah, basically, yeah. He's, he's a massive great. red. Hey, he's brilliant, I like him. Sports <laughs> Liverpool, he's a good actor. You know, what more do you want? <laughs> Go on, you're spitting on Kevin Keegan. Oh, yeah, so I spit on the card and I'm like, like, how, f how far do you want me to go with this? And he went, lad, just go for it. So I was like, right, okay. I mean, I went, when someone tells me to go for it, Dan's not. It's like, I go for it. Honestly, mate, I covered him in spit all down his top. And I was like, oh my God, mate. And um, he's like, yeah, maybe, maybe just a bit less next time. Like, oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> mate, well, what got released in the end? I mean, it was, you did go for it. It was full uh, on. 
yeah, I, you know, there's no point in going off ways there. You've got to go full out. Yeah. So, so, so then some of the other ones that I seen on your list, Gaston and Beauty and the Beast, I was wondering why you weren't the Beast. I mean, it seems, it seems like a perfect yeah. role, but... Exactly, exactly. They cast <laughs> me as someone who's supposed to be really good looking and that didn't really work out, but it was great to play that. It was like, uh, I, I love doing parts where you can sort of feel as though you can put a little bit of your own stamp on it. Yeah. Not try and copy what everyone else has done. So it was it was brilliant to that for like two or three years. Yeah. So that was that was great on and off. Yeah. And then the uh, the one that that we'd probably seen you in before we knew you um, was uh, football uh, in Betfred adverts. I mean. Oh it's, yeah, yeah. With Stuart Pierce, honestly, the high knees. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. We've all done those high knees. Oh. There you go. That was an 80s classic training <laughs> method, wasn't it? It was brilliant. It was, but the, the best thing about it was everyone in that advert was just up, right up for it. Yeah. All oh, yeah. really excited. Yeah. And yours, your high knees was brilliant. The fact that you come out of the changing rooms doing it as well is yes. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good one. Honest, then, honestly, mate, they used to say, um, like I used to play a bit of Sunday League in the Skem League, and people used to say to me, you've got like that Phil Neville, like, glaze over it, you know, when it's just full on, like, this is like, we're going to war here. Like, like, just lighten up, Phil. I'm like, I, I just can't. I just have to get in this zone. That's, that's like exactly, a, I channeled me in a Phil Neville. Uh, it's like a stretched Phil Neville. Oh, well, just <laughs> say, one thing I didn't see on his list was he hasn't played Crouchy in any, in any adverts or anything out that I'm surprised at that. Mate, I got, I got asked, with the Beth Fred, it was like, we want someone who's like Peter Crouch. Can you do the robot? Genuinely. Did the robot, got it. But I also got asked to be Peter Crouch's stand-in for something years ago. I was doing something else, so I couldn't do it. I was like, oh, what a missed opportunity that was. At this He's point, I, um, I've known Phil for many years now, and I just want to bring up a couple of things, Phil, on your spotlight that I had a look at today. Oh, oh go on. So on your spotlight, it yeah. says, under skills and under sports, right. it's got an asterisk next to football, which means highly skilled. Well, yeah, see... see. <laughs> You see, you, see what, you see, what that is, that means, right, is that you, you, you could play <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> and it means that I really want to get the job, so just hire me. Yeah, yeah so that's basically... Well, another thing I noticed, Phil, and, and, you know, I don't want to bring out dirty washing on, on our podcast, but... Go on. You've also no sign of mentioning Scrooge, what we were in. <laughs> Have I yeah, not? I didn't make the list. Did, no, did it, I went. To, I went. To, I didn't even make the list. Phil. I didn't even make the. Is it not on there? No, it's not. And I don't want to bring it up in front of the lads because. Oh. But I think we need to deal with this. Just because you were my understudy, don't oh, be hard. You know, you what, I don't want us to, to come out now on podcast. Understudy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting that part, and you were saying, "Phil, like, do you know what? I'm just so esteemed to be working with someone like you." So, <laughs> I feel like that's. Well, the, the best, the best one. So I'm looking through, I'm looking through the list, and then there was a tab which was role play. So I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, you never know what you're going to find on here. I was thinking, I know it'd be some sort of photocopier salesman or something. <laughs> Clicked on it, and there was a part in there. Luckily, it wasn't porn. So that's what I say. The role play I know isn't that type of <laughs> no photocopying going on in the role play I watch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know, mate. Times are hard. You never know. <laughs> oh, please don't, mate. Don't do that. Please. So then the, uh, the, the, the thing that uh, is obviously um, we've been talking about lately is the, the alienist. Oh, yeah. Um, so tell us about that because that's, that's out now. Uh, yep. it's, uh, it's something that you're really happy about playing a part in. Talk us through it. Oh, mate. It was, um, I did, it, was, it was a weird one again because like, my mum was in the hospital. She was having a operation on the arm and then we were just about to go in to see her uh and then this self-tape come through and i was like for this big tv show i was like i am never getting this it was like two lines in something and so it, you could spend hours doing something and redoing it and redoing it and usually they're the ones you don't end up getting it's the ones where you sort of just let yourself go so i just set this tape off Set it off. A uh, couple of weeks later, said, oh, you, you're sort of like pencils, which means basically they write your name in pencil and then they can rub it out and put someone else's name in. <laughs> so you go, right, okay. Uh, and then I got a call. I, I, was, I was out on uh, London Road outside Subway to say that I got it and I was going like next week. So I went into Subway and I'm desperate to tell this guy. And he's just looking at me and I've just got this 
big weird grin at him, saying, can I have a foot long, please, mate? You know. <laughs> that was your celebration. <laughs> yeah. You normally only get a six inch one. Well, so. Exactly. You know, <laughs> push the bones out. Um, so then we went to, I went over to Budapest uh, and then I did my little bit and it was with like uh, Luke Evans and Dakota Fanning. And it made, the, the, the set was just, it was like, I've been to Florida once and it was just like Florida. It was absolutely huge. And I just thought, you know, you've just got to, just got to go in and give it your best. So I stripped everything back. And then I went, come home. And then I heard from like the, the vocal coach basically said, they really liked you. So then they ended up writing me in for a few more bits. Brilliant. So I got another part in it with Daniel, who's the, the lead. Um, and then he got like the, the script changed a bit, but he got my original lines put back in. So my scene got, made a lot bigger. So thanks to him, like in episode five, that scene's a lot bigger than what it was supposed to be. Or thanks to him, because he thought it was really good. So it was amazing. And that was over in, that was over in Budapest. Yeah. Yeah, mate, That's... it was like five-star hotel and everything. I'm, I'm like an absolute travel lodge type of guy. Do you know what I mean? More than happy with that. So it was It was, it was brilliant seeing your, you were like, you, you did some videos and pictures and stuff about what you, what you were doing and how yeah. made up you were. You were just... Okay. Absolutely made up. You were getting picked up, chauffeured around and stuff. It was brilliant. <gasps> Mate, honestly, I got picked up outside my house in a, like the most amazing Mercedes Benz you've ever seen. And I had to tell you in so you could watch Sky Sports <laughs> in the back. <laughs> what a life. And then the next day I was back to Kirby and no one cared. Yeah. So he, um, <laughs> I make the most of it. He refuses to get into my seat now. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> it's the leg room, Dash, you know what I mean? Come on, mate. <laughs> but where can people see that now, Phil? Uh, if you go on to Netflix, uh, if you type in The Alienist, season two will come up and it's called Angel of Darkness. So uh, please go and have, check it out. It was amazing. Number one or number two in the charts as well, Phil. Is it, yeah? Yeah, oh, it's right up there, yeah. I've seen wow. it. Like, oh, amazing. And I just done that. Being Keegan is on Amazon Prime, isn't it, yes. Phil, at the moment, yeah? Yeah. So, Thank so you. well, I watched that the other night. It was excellent. It's really good. Really? Yeah, really good. So, so how, how did you get into that one? Uh, being Keegan, I think it was... It, they, they basically said like someone uh, like a big Liverpool star was going to be in it, so I got a like an audition through for, from my agent, and I just had a feeling when they say big Liverpool star, I just mm. thought this is Stephen Graham. Like I'm from Kirby, he grew up in like Northwood, like a, you know I watched him like throughout the years, so I just I, I just sort of felt like I had to improvise quite a lot in the the audition, and she seemed to like it, so. Yeah, I, I got the part, and then next the week after I was filming with them. So worked out well, mate. What a guy! Amazing, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. again, Thomas, agent. Are you thinking that's the way forward now for you to uh, to go forward? To be honest, I can probably just do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know the score. So Phil, um, you know how difficult it is to get them on this podcast and yeah. keep them straight on here. Never mind putting them in front of a, a real camera. So, so I think here, Phil, could you give Thomas a line to say? And let, let's see, and, you, and you, you're, you're as the director, Phil. Can you yeah. see how he does and give him some feedback? And let, let's have a bit of a role play ourselves, Si. Direct myself. Yeah, yeah see, I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about this actually a lot today. And, you know, I really want to test you here. Yeah, okay. So I want you just to tell me now, right, put yourself in the, the mind frame. You're a massive football fan. We already know that, okay? Unfortunately, this time it's not Liverpool. It's actually Chelsea, Right. And you want to tell me how much you love John Terry, and you've got to mean this. So just embody that, feel it. <laughs> Take it away, Thomas. Do you know what? Fuck this. I'm going on. <laughs> no, because sometimes you have to do things no. you're not comfortable with. I'm not happy. I'm going busy thinking about it. <laughs> not happening. Hey, this, Phil. Is, this is like the uh, predictions last year. That's the fact he, that he, oh, he immediately said, I'm not wearing an Everton shirt. Yeah. Oh, well, honestly, here's something for you, right? I I had to be um, David De Gea's standing double, right? <laughs> and I I did, and I had to wear this. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes, that's enough so, to push it over the edge. So that, well, it is. All Everton fans support United anyway, don't they? Well, well, mate, we've had a great deal. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Tim <laughs> Howard, Phil Neville, thank you. Darren Gibson was all right as well. Thank you very much. But you, so, Thomas, if you want to go far, mate, you're going to have to get out of this zone you've got yourself in, mate. To be honest, I could make it. I'd just, I'd just be very selective in the jobs that I take. Just Liverpool FC? No, I mean, I'll just do other stuff. I'll be like a, 
one of them special actors that do like the action scenes and all that gear. Stunt double. Okay. <laughs> stunt double. <laughs> imagine who are you going to stunt double for? <laughs> <laughs> Himself. <laughs> you could be a stunt double, I reckon. Right, like, you see, could fall I'm downstairs not... and stuff. Phil, have you have you had anyone stop you and say, oh, you know what? I have seen you on the telly. You're brilliant." Has anyone stopped you and done it yet? Do you know what? I actually did have one person do it, right? And I was giving out cans of Coke doing promo work. And you're like, oh my God, you, you were in those Befreds adverts, weren't you? And it's like, yeah, yeah, mate, I was. He went, do you want a Coke? And he looks at me like, what are you doing here? And it's like, unfortunately, this is what the life of an actor is. One minute you're doing something great, the next minute you're back to a normal well, job. Listen to this then, Phil. I'm in Go the on. park today with the dogs. Oh, hello. This kid, this kid come up to me on his bike. And I had my daughter with me, and he said, you're a free man in the football. I watch you. I'm subscribed. I love it. It's my favourite show. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Um, that, um, honest, it happened today. Mate. It did happen as well, because my uh, my kids were, were evidenced it. They were there. Wow, wow mate. So mate, you're, mate. Mate, you're halfway there, mate. Okay, so listen, you're on Netflix. I'm on YouTube. And, you know, what? <laughs> you're nearly there. Mate, mate, I believe in you, man. I believe in you. Oh, yeah, there's a there's an interesting one. You, you, you know, you've done loads of stuff now, and and I know you work hard at it. You, you know, this is not this doesn't come easy at all. Yeah. Um, you work hard at your craft. You work hard at getting the roles, uh, and then you give it your all when you're in there. But with what's happened over the last, you know, maybe ten years with with how social media has impacted yeah. um, the act, the the life of an actor, and things like the you know the the boom of Netflix and YouTube and streaming. How's that impacted the way you go about getting roles now and, and how you put yourself out there? Yeah, first of all, like Netflix and Amazon, there's just so much more work now because when you, you flick through, there's so many shows that you it's impossible to watch them all. Um, so, I mean, there's, I think there's something going to be filmed for Netflix uh, in Liverpool in the next couple of weeks. Like Batman, obviously, was filming yeah. in Liverpool. Um so there's just there's just a reams of more work. So when you go into like there's a thing called Spotlight, basically where it lists like quite a lot of the jobs, and you're just seeing now all of the time. So I mean, one of the things I found that's been useful to me, a lot of people rely on the agents to get them the work. But I know I got a, a really big job that I went to Prague for not too long ago because I saw it on Spotlight and I was like, my agent was subbing me for it anyway. But I thought, Do you know what? I'm just going to send them an email. Send them an email got a Zoom audition, then got a recall to London, and I got the gig. And I think I think you've got to be so proactive now yourself. You can't just sit back. You know, a little email, constantly trying to create new work. If you put yourself out there and try and meet that work, it, something will happen, even if it's just a conversation with a casting director or whatever. It's you know? got to have changed, hasn't it? So you think about the, the way <laughs> Acton worked um, years ago, your agent was the most important part yeah. of every, or they started every relationship, whereas now it's, it's much, much easier to get two people and have an interaction with them, I guess. Of course. And there's loads of like uh, stuff where casting directors now posting directly like to Twitter, uh, Instagram, sometimes Facebook. <clears throat> About like specifically if they're looking like for like a six foot four guy from Liverpool, that's obviously quite a niche <laughs> yeah. market. Do you know what I mean? So, like, uh, social media is huge. If they can, I, I know I was speaking to some casting director the day, and they were saying like sometimes they'll go into Instagram and type in the hashtags. Yeah. If they're searching for something specific, so if you haven't got social media personally, I think you're a massive disadvantage. Yeah. So Thomas, make keep make sure you push that out, mate. Keep pushing that out. Again, there's a liability on there as well. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we, we have to sometimes... I've got this made. As you know, I'm very talented. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll take Darren off you, Phil. And yeah. Darren could be my little guide. Take me golfing and, you know, learn how to ride a bike and all that gear. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see how far I go, eh? We'll have a little competition. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. <laughs> I'm putting my money on Phil. Just, yeah, just, just on that, uh, Phil, tell them about a um, quick story about when you phone me up and say, let's go to driving range because you're doing a golf thing the, the next day. Tell them the story uh, yeah. and what happened. Oh, God, Jesus. Um, basically, like with a lot of stuff, uh, it's so last minute, isn't it, Daz? So yeah. I basically rang them up and was like, I hadn't played golf for quite a while. So I was like, Daz, I know he plays golf quite a lot. So he took me, didn't you? And he, you know, he's 
going through all this stuff and that he, he, to be fair I owe a, a lot of credit to Daz he's very, he's an incredibly as you both know incredibly supportive friend uh, he's always there for people and he really helped me out that day uh, he helped me out with uh, his golf bag as well the other day just for like because sometimes they like specific things in, in the shots and Daz has got a, a lovely golf bag so he's he was he's amazing he always helps me out and I, I am very appreciative of, of his friendship was that a did you just say that you've got a lovely ball bag Darren <laughs> golf bag <laughs> golf bag Listen, we're friends but not that friendship what we do on the driving race and tie up to <laughs> Phil and I yeah but doesn't doesn't this go a little bit further as well because I think I've heard this story didn't, I might have told you didn't you spend yeah, all the time trying to figure out how to hit a golf ball and then when you got there they told you you had to miss oh yeah <laughs> honestly mate honestly <laughs> We spent we spent ages, me and Daz, and Daz like try this, try this, try this, and then I got to the because obviously with COVID times they're giving you like half half an hour time slots to get into your bit and get out. Got there to the to the, to the team like right okay. I mean these guys like right in front of me, and they were like yeah. So basically all we wanted to do is just uh, miss the golf ball. I was like Are you messing up. <laughs> spent all last night trying to with Daz, <laughs> and that's even harder because they're right in front of you. And you're trying to miss, think, Jesus, if I miss this, I'm going to kill one of these, these fellas here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, honestly. Didn't it? Oh, mate, honestly. Very appreciative to Daz. Yeah, no, we have, we Thank you very much. So you, two have, um, you two have done a lot, uh, well, uh, separately and together, have done uh, regional acting as well. Yeah. Uh, I've seen it quite a bit on yours uh, as well, uh, Phil. Things like The Tin Man, which... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. How do you enjoy the, the regional stuff and the theatre scene as opposed to the going in and doing, working on big sets? Uh, I think, I, I think particularly at like, if, it, if anyone's ever been to St. Helens Theatre Royal, yeah. it just feels like an absolute family. Like, I get on so well with everyone there. Everyone from like the cleaners to the guys who are behind stage are just as important. And so it was, I had a really lovely uh, moment with the Tin Man. Because the Tim Man's like the, the middle kid. Like, no <laughs> one really loves him. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I based it on you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> that I'm so stiff after the football. <laughs> That's it, mate. That's it. But then I looked down. We were just taking our, uh, our bows. And there was a little boy dressed as the Tim Man. Oh, jeez. Like, and he must have been about, like, five. And I thought, I've got to get this kid on stage. So I clocked his mum. Give her like a little signal, and she brought him up. And then one of my mates took a picture, like, and we're both facing the opposite way of me and him dressed as the as Tim Men. And it, it was just one of the most beautiful photos I've, I've ever had. It That's was a really, really beautiful. important question now. How and much does it cost in tinfoil for a six month? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, once what, you get it on, you just don't take it off. Hey, 30 metres is dead deer in... in... <laughs> get down to Aldi. That's the, one. Oh, the, best, the best part of this is, Thomas is thinking about Phil, literally, just wrap <laughs> wrapping his hands <laughs> in tinfoil. You keep your fantasies yeah. to yourself, Tom. And then the other, the other thing as well is, you know, so I'm, I'm, the Tim Man, you've got quite an important part in, in the show. So if yep. you're doing like the Christmas panto, how can you say the clean is just as important as you? They're not getting on stage. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Tell you oh. what. No, well, listen, if you're going to be an actor, you've got to be a bit selfish. You've learned that in me. Acting 101. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Thomas. It's all about you. That's it. You're going to believe it. I know that, Phil. Oh, You're both far with that attitude. I told you he's a liability. Hon honestly, though, some, some actors do behave a bit like that. And it, it's, it's never... I, th I think when you're from, like... <laughs> <laughs> I think when you when you're from like Liverpool, you, you just can't be like that, can you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, well, so that that being interesting to see some of the the people who you've worked with. So you, you know, Stephen Graham, and you work mm -hmm. with the the team on the Alienist as well. Yeah. What were, what were they like? Were they relatively normal, down to earth? Oh mate, yeah. Uh, like Stephen Graham was just totally just like uh, one of the lads. Uh, when when we were doing the scene outside Anfield, loads of kids were getting like let out. School kids, they start like clocking them. And then he was like, if you give me five minutes, let me do this scene, I'll get pictures with you. And he got pictures with every single kid. And I mean, this was getting like to rush hour, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. and we only had a, like a limited time to do it. He was just lovely with everyone. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. And you know, obviously these kids are grown up, might want to aspire to be someone like him or do you know what I mean? 
And Daniel Brewer, I told you, he, he got that that whole scene elongated for me. So the way it was originally, he didn't have to do that. And I am so grateful for him. And when I rapped, he came straight over to me and shook my hand, like as I was going home. Bill, and just, for, me, um, just for those people who aren't in the business, obviously I am. Uh, rapped, could you explain that to oh, yeah. Thomas? Because he's going back to tinfoil. Yeah, yeah, basically it's like when they wrap you, Tom, in tinfoil. <laughs> they, they, they unwrap you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've got that book acting for idiots. You me? <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, so listen, we've, as as suspected, uh, we're now like half an hour in, and we haven't talked football at all. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, to be fair, we're, I'm as interested as anyone in in, in hearing about it. But let's yes. get to some of the the football stuff. Yeah. So you're obviously wearing an Everton shirt. I'm guessing yeah. you don't wear that for fun. Uh, you're a blue. Yeah, just a little, a little bit of a blue. Yeah, <laughs> always been a blue. Is it a family thing, or do you know what? Do you know what the weird thing is? Like, half of my family are, uh, are reds, and and half of my family are blues. And uh, I grew up, and my uncle was was a massive Evertonian. And to be honest with you, the reason why I became an Evertonian was because all the values that I respected in him, like honesty, integrity, hard work. Be it slightly being a bit of an underdog, I I I, I saw that in in him supporting Everton, and so that that honestly it was like a um, it, it was more than just a football choice. It was like part of your identity, if you, if you know what I mean. But then it was hard because like you had all the best players like Owen McManaman and Fowler. <laughs> you know what I mean? All the stuff that I wanted to like, but it, it was like it was like a, a family loyalty. So that's why I became an Everton fan. You named all three good Evertonians there for that switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All you needed there was Carragher. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I, th- I think it, um, um, most families in Liverpool are the, are the same. as There's yeah. normally a split. My on, In ours, me and my dad are the only Liverpool, until Thomas obviously joined the family, we were the only Liverpool fans. My brother, really? uncles and everyone are all Everton supporters. Um but I think I, I followed my dad. It was, you know, my yeah. dad's a red and I'm going to be a red. And my brother was a, a blue because he was trying to piss my dad off. So that was the way <laughs> we ended up. But I think that's relatively normal that you get a yeah. bit of a split these days. Um, do you, have you ever played football much? Uh, well, I, I played, uh, I started quite late uh, when I was about 13. So it was like, maybe not, maybe 11. Uh, so obviously for me and Thomas, you're probably going to hate this, but my idol was like David Beckham. Like, I remember him scoring. Like, don't upset him, Phil. Sorry, don't sorry don't mate. Sorry, him, sorry, sorry, <laughs> mate. Sorry. Comes on with a blue shirt listen, on. listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. It comes down to the Everton thing again, right? The reason why he was my favourite player, because do you remember when he got sent off? Uh, Simeone and like, yeah, yeah. he had all that hate. Like, that would, that would have crushed pretty much anyone. And for not him, me. Well, not you. <laughs> apart, apart from you. <laughs> Far from you, but like the, the way he just came back and was was probably even better than he was before. I uh, for me, like the resilience and the determination for me that just shone through. So that's why, uh, that's why I sort of uh, connected with him. So then I started playing a bit. Just try. I ended up trying to copy him to try to be a, a right winger. Then I grew up to six foot four. I was obviously <laughs> a, an attempted centre back. <laughs> I say attempted because Daz has seen me play and Daz has like step right, left, drop off. Yeah. So unless I'm playing next to Daz, I'm absolutely awful. Like I'm, I'm like a mixture on a good day of John Stones and Titus Bramble. You just don't know what you're going to get. Daz, you know it, mate. You've seen me step out from the back and, and pull off I, some pairs. I've seen lads nutmeg and run, run through his legs. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, as he was just describing, uh, how you, Daz, have just directed him around the pitch. That's basically what you did with Thomas when Thomas played. Yeah, 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 yeah. it really is. No one went through my legs, though, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, mate, that's, that's the same for me as Megs. So, so Dan is, is not lying through that. Um, but I played a little bit in the Skem League when I was about 18. And... I remember someone turned up with a baseball bat after the game because they didn't like the ref's decision. And at that point, I thought, I like my face and I want to be an actor. So this it's is not probably, not the, probably not the route for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Uh, you, you've got to be... I mean, well, to, as I, I was just going to say, you've, you've got to be a little bit touched to play football in Liverpool. But yeah. Darren has played football in Liverpool all of his life and he's avoided any of that because 
he makes friends with everyone on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. He's literally everyone's best mate. He chats yeah. to the centre forwards all the time. All you're yeah. doing is Darren down there, yeah. yeah. And then never gets kicked. They generally come and kick me. Yeah, I have, I have what they call um, people around me who they go and kick. And I chat to them and we probably go for a coffee after the game, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Darren's giving out acting advice while we're playing. Yeah. That's and the way like, to do it. I say things like, oh, you, you've made a great run there, lad. He didn't pass it through to you there. I'd be able to go with him. And he goes, I know, mate, <laughs> I'm just making this. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> deflect. That's the way it does. Deflect <laughs> off, deflect. All the time. <laughs> does it all the time. Um, yeah, the uh, it definitely is a it's an acquired taste. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. we played it forever and yeah. uh, and we love it and we're still trying to play it now. I don't know whether I'd call it actual playing as we we run round a little bit, but well, you run more than me, obviously. Well, but I mean that's been the case for the last twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know what? We should invite Phil down to watch when we're able to. Yeah. To yeah, see probably. Thomas in action, sort of, you know, doing a lot of improv on the line. And uh, watch me bark orders out to people and siren them around. That's basically you, you know, the, so the, the other thing is as well, we have to be careful with inviting people down to the game as well because y- you're going to lose more people, Daz. So as Thomas said earlier, you've already lost your dad. I so, yeah. didn't say that. Yeah, said it. yeah. my dad's gone. <laughs> Paul, Paul had already gone. Nicola, yeah, I think, yeah. is going to go to the dark side at some stage. In fact, sure he has with <laughs> yeah. Joey. Yeah. <laughs> Surely Joey's on the dark side. Without a doubt. Uh, and then so lost his favourite chair. <laughs> his chair's lost his favourite chair, yeah, to Sean McCusker. And then, you know, Phil turns up at the footy, then all of a sudden you might not have any mates anymore. To be fair, when it was six in a bubble, I was struggling for five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Phil, have you, have you, uh, did you ever go the game much? or? Um, yeah. Uh, well, do you know, it was the first time I ever went. I, was, I must have been about 11 or, or 12. And this is how bad it was. We turned up. And me and my cousin and my uncle are watching him. I'm watching the game. I'm like, where's all the where's all the sounds? And he's like, no, no, the commentary's on the TV. <laughs> I was like, oh, fair. right, okay, okay. And I, qu- I quickly started going quite a lot. Uh, when it was about 18 to like 19, Everton were in like Europe quite a lot. So yeah, yeah. we days, the evenings. We had some amazing times at, at Goodison. Uh, we didn't win anything, but we, you know, we were we were close to winning like it. An FA Cup, almost. Um, and then I started working at Everton a couple of years ago. So I moved like Machiri and uh, like Marcel Brands and his wife and stuff through, which was just an absolute dream for me. Basically, you, you, you move them in. You, have, you put your up, have some dinner, watch the match, pick them back up, take them back to the car. Job done. What a dream job that oh was. God, that sounds massive, brilliant. Massive Everton fan. And... Um, Zuma gave me his man of the match bottle of champagne. I don't drink like, but I was like, yeah, nice one. Thanks very much. Wow. <laughs> so, what's yeah. Wrong, so, hey, what's wrong with you actors not drinking? Surely that would keep you going, you and us. Honestly, I think my mum my never drunk, so I, I probably just adapted it. So, uh, so yeah, it's yeah. Daz, is, Daz looks great for not drinking, though, doesn't he? He's like, yeah, but I think Daz doesn't, doesn't drink because at some stage he's gone off the deep end, hasn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got yes. hammered. Got yeah. hammered and walked around. Okay, the prostitutes. <laughs> You've gone to the game. I'm just got bang into it and then you've <laughs> lost everything. <laughs> You're yeah. never looking at my bank receipts again, Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be careful, Dad. Don't show him everything. No, no. So then, uh, in your, in, in what, what's, you know, in your lifetime, when was the best Everton team? Uh, ooh, I would say. I'm a big fan of David Moyes uh, because it, for me, again, it comes back to that like hard work, resilience, like match of the day two, you know, Dosman and Kale uh, last night, uh, the other night talking about it and it was just all about dedication. So I think his towards uh, one or two years before he left and then going the transition into Martinez, like that first year of Martinez, what we played was just unbelievable. Like Lukaku was just, yeah, we, was we, we've struggled. I've spoken to Daz a lot about this. Like we have just struggled to replace, but well, we haven't replaced him really. But that team, like Gareth Barry, even Kevin Morales, we all quality, quality players. Baines, Coleman, Howard, such yeah. a, an underrated keeper. To be honest, even I think amongst a lot of uh, Evertonians, yeah. so that, that's that's when I felt like we were at a, on our game. Hopefully, we'll start to. Get to that level again. How are you feeling about the way about the way they are now? You know, he's uh, Ancelotti's come in. 
uh, has made a lot of change to the club and then has had mm-hmm. a really big impact on the quality of players that has come in. And obviously this year has been the biggest uh, influx of quality players. What's your take on the current crop? Oh, well, like Ancelotti, I was convinced we were going to get Arteta. So I went away to do, I had a break from the Everton job. I went away to do Panto. And I checked my phone and we got Ancelotti. Like, how, how on it, for Everton, how on earth that happened, which just blew my mind. I, I would have been happy with Arteta, to be honest with you. But I, I think he's he's changed the mentality in the club now. And to be, I think the players know he's a winner. Yeah. So so it, it'll probably bring out a little something more in them. But I saw a stat today, and I've spoken to Daz about this as well. Like, we haven't won a home game since like July 2018 without Richarlison. And I still think he was obviously missing the other day. And I think that's a massive problem for us we've been playing amazingly well but when, once we get a few injuries I think that's when we start to see the gap still in our team and I think in January I think he, we might need one or two extra players totally agree and we've talked about that yeah, the Rich Allison one is, is, a, is a really interesting one the, he works harder than anyone else on the pitch and oh, oh, he's massive it, yeah you think about why Liverpool have, have, have done so well over recent years it's because their forwards work so hard over yeah. a major part of it Rich okay. Alisson is the hardest worker on the park and al- although he got himself into trouble him missing those, him missing the games has a real impact on the way Everton play and also has a real impact on freeing up the other players as well like yeah. um, uh, James you know, honestly he's the, he's the only player that for like, for like the last couple of seasons that I've seen being able to beat like three players and when there's no one around him, you, you like win a corner for us. I think when you look at the size of the players, like with Keane and Calvert-Lewin and stuff like that, set pieces for us are massive, especially when you've had like Baines and Dean who can just put it on anyone's head from anywhere really. Like to be able to give us that outlet, even when it's like he's the only person in the opposition's half, to be able to give us that break from, because there was a lot of games where we were sort of be losing it up top quite easily and then just be it the, the flux of attack and waves were just continuously coming and then obviously we were just losing stupid goals yeah, so he he's a massive mid, for us the midfield wasn't as strong as well either so when yeah. you were losing the ball up top yeah your midfield were weak they didn't have the legs and yeah. then you're getting a lot of pressure put on the back four and the back four can only ever do so much also when, once we lost gay i think that was a yeah. massive blow for us I, I you wouldn't blame him going to psg but um we obviously struggled. We had, we brought Gabamin in, and obviously he got injured, so no one really got to see what he could do. I um, um, sorry, Phil. I, I, on, I like how, how Keane's played since uh, Ancelotti's come in. He's switched sides a little bit. He's moved mm-hmm. on to the to, to the left a little bit, and I think it's it suits him more. I also think the uh, the progress Calvin Lewin's made has really helped Devon a lot because actually yeah. they were probably dying to get a striker in, and uh, Calvin Lewin actually started like a house on fire. He's been brilliant. You know, we again. If he, I said a start to see that he can get you fifteen goals, he's had a good season. I yeah. think he's on nine already or something. I think he's he's done very well. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's because he's getting more chances. There's more chances being mm-hmm. created because the midfield that Everton have got at the moment. You take two of them out because of injuries, Everton are going to struggle because of the size of the squad. Yeah. But I think in the Premier League generally, most te- I was saying this to Sam the other day. Most teams now in the Premier League, they've got thirteen good players. But after that, it, it gets weak quite quickly. Um, and, and I don't know whether that's because clubs are then thinking, well, I'm not going to spend £40 million on a sub uh, yeah. unless you're Man United and, and that's what you do. Uh, but, but generally, it's, it's 13 good players. Everton have got probably 11 really good players, two OK who come in and do a job. But then after that, it, it's, it's, there's not much there. Yeah. Oh, we had oh, a I... conversation, didn't we, Daz, last night yeah. on, on Facebook about... Um, the Liverpool forwards. So we had uh, Minamino and Jota and Divock Origi up top yesterday. And everyone knows how I feel about Divock Origi. He's just not good enough. And Minamino is not at the level he needs to be to inf- influence the game. But I-, I was, and I was giving him crap on Facebook, and someone come back and said, Well, what do you do? Because if we're going to replace someone like a, a Divock Origi, we're going to have to go and spend 30 million plus. Yeah. to get a forward that's going to sit on the bench for 70% of the year, and maybe that's not going to happen. Mm. It's, it's a good point. I still don't like him. But yeah. I think the problem is, is that he is, he's remaining around the team on, his, on what he's done in the past and the big goals he scored. 
But the, the logic is there that if, if what are you going to do with it? You're, going to, you're not going to have them sat on the bench for 70% of the year when you've paid 40 million for them. And Everton have got a similar problem as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I was looking at a few stats earlier just because when you were talking about the striker thing, I mean, Calvert Lewin's played 120 games, 42 subs, and he scored 31 goals. And I mean, what, he's like 22, is he? Yeah, is yeah, he even, is like even that? that? Lukaku played, uh, he started uh, 141 starts, eight subs, and he scored 68 goals. And you, you can't compare the two because they were like two totally, even though Lukaku started quite early, he hit yeah. the ground quite early quite a lot. And so there's almost like a, a double ratio there for Lukaku. And I think that for us, that shows if we would have had Lukaku with the quality that we've got now, I think that, like we would be banging in so many more goals. I think Calvert Lewin's done brilliantly, and he—I've never seen someone for a long time work so hard. Like the, particularly where he drops off, knocks the ball on, and Bashalison goes forward. Yeah. Even if he wins a corner, free kick, penalty, whatever. That's why those two particularly work so well in that team. But I—I I just feel as though we need—we have needed for probably one or two seasons another striker. And one of my other friends tipped me off just before Ings went to uh, Southampton from Liverpool. I hadn't really seen much of him, but he was like, I think he'd be perfect for Everton. Yeah, He probably wouldn't come from Southampton when he knows he's starting every game and he's pushing for England. But he is he's just such a potent finisher for us. And I think if we have to buy another striker at some point, because once someone gets injured, if Calvert-Lewin got injured, what would we do, you know? Yeah. But I, I just feel like someone like Danny Ings would have been an amazing striker for us. And I think he probably would have started, even if it's in a two with yeah. Calvert-Lewin. They'll go after, they'll definitely go after someone in January. And the, the thing is with Calvert-Lewin, you, you talk about what he does where he'll drop off and he'll knock the ball on. And I think Richarlison and him switch that up quite a bit. Richarlison yeah. will come in for feet into yeah. the, the, the 10 role. Yeah. And Calvert-Lewin will go, then go on the shoulder of the last centre-half. Yeah. But I think what Calvert-Lewin is doing really well is even when he is the person who's flicking it on, He's then turning and getting in the box. And if you look at the goals he scored this year, yeah. I think all but one of them was inside the six-yard box. Mm -hmm. And that is something that Ancelotti in the summer was saying, we yeah. need DCL to be getting in the box and getting on the end of it, as opposed yeah. to being outside the box and trying to yeah. score goals from 20 yards away. And I think well, that's something where I think Ancelotti is, has taken his style and stamped it on the team and the player. And then what he's yeah. done is, He's brought in players around him who can create. And then that mm -hmm. creative edge is then feeding um, Calvert-Lewin the, uh, the opportunities, which I think is working well for them. I think when you look at like the, the style of, of Silva, I mean, he was operating a lot in like the channels. And as you say, there, him and, and one of the first things he said to him was just first touch, finish. Uh, first yeah. touch, finish. That was it. Yeah. And I think you are. I think you are seeing the difference in him now. We Go spoke on, about this a lot before on a previous podcast with regards to financial fair pay and uh, the... Uh, amounts of money that machiri has got and obviously in the background you've got Megaphone uh, yeah, yeah. and whether Usmanov is coming in yeah, yeah. or is, is privately backing Mashiri uh, with Everton. The the problem that I that I can see is uh, whether or not commercially Everton are earning enough money to then spend the money which they've got there's no doubt mm -hmm. there's absolutely yeah. tons of money behind Everton now and they can go for they're going for you know, they're putting the names in the half for big players. And where they are positionally in the league is more attractive than they were the last couple of seasons. So they can go and try and get these better players. Is Everton commercially earning enough money to, to, to be financial fair play, to then attract these bigger names in? And is it more of a case of, right, we're going to have to build the brand? Like, you know, Liverpool yep. done it. When, we'll be, when we got George Lett and, and, and Hicks, they were like all about branding and they, and they bought all these top people in from all around the world to, to grow the brand, to earn more money commercially, to apparently spend on the, 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 the team and the squad. It didn't quite work out, but the new owners have done it absolutely amazing. I mean, they've got, we've got sponsors on everything. They've got sponsors on the undies, I think. You know, they earn that much money. Liverpool yeah. commercially are, are an absolute monster. Probably only second to Man United. What's 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 your thoughts on that type of thing with with Everton? Yeah, I think I think I read something not so long ago that said Everton had actually recorded quite a bit of losses 
for the past one or two seasons. So obviously, in in terms of that, I think they are. They, well, they have definitely since he's come in. They've pumped huge volumes of money in. And I said to Daz when we got took over, I said it could be a bit of a curse in a way, because it's like you get all this money and you do a Tottenham, yeah. or you do you do a bit of a Man City and you, you overspend trying to find a quicker solution to the problem in closing that gap between a, a top eight, a top six, to eventually where we want to be is a, is a top four. I think uh, with San and Hammers Rodriguez, I think that just opens up like a, a whole wave of like Colombian fans. Yeah. Same as like Richarlison. Richarlison tweeted the other day saying, when are we going to start selling Everton shirts in Brazil? Like, so, you know, for like, I think that is where they're going to try to make it more financially viable. And so you can understand in a way when you sign players, you're spending a lot of money up front and you're paying them a lot of wages. But then you know that they're, because they're one of like, Rodriguez is probably the biggest export in Colombia mm-hmm. football-wise for a long time. Yeah. I'm glad you qualified that by saying football-wise. Well, I, I did say that. We're not talking cartel stuff here, Jeremy. <laughs> Just, just on that, uh, we are looking to market the Thomas Morris Wall of Hate T-shirt. If anyone's interested in sponsoring us, please get in touch, yeah. and we'll put all the pictures of uh, people we can't put on 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 them. I say we'd have to, we'd have to use like stunt doubles. Well, we've we got, got Phil. Phil. We just get Phil in the kids. <laughs> we can do everyone. He'll wear anyone of you. He'll have to wear any standard. Mate, I will honestly. Even well, Gary Neville. Gary Neville. <laughs> Tea bag. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get to uh, we want to we want to talk about the games from the weekend, and uh, we could do this all night, but people might be getting bored at this stage of Thomas's chat. Um, all right, so <laughs> so Friday, so Phil, we're gonna we're gonna get you involved in this. Um, yeah. We we won't hang around too long, um, but let's let's run through what happened because it was a it was a, a very different weekend than what we've seen so far. What we've seen right up until this week is really high scoring games. Um, defensively really poor. But one of the things that I noticed this week was defensively teams were a little bit better. Uh, there was less goals conceded. People seemed to be a bit more organised. Uh, and and it just felt like it was getting back to the normal state of play as opposed to um, what had been going on last year. Uh, sorry, earlier in the year. But one of the weird um, results of, or the, the weird, weird results of the weekend was Villa versus Leeds, that's... 3-0 to Leeds and Bamford scored a crack and hat-trick. You say, you say weird, Simon. Um, and I'd have to agree with you. <laughs> it's, um, I thought, and I mentioned it, and I think I put it on, on the Facebook, I thought Leeds were outstanding. I thought first off, pretty, pretty even. But Leeds' energy, the way they play, was absolutely superb. And, and I've gone on this podcast for six months about the Villa system and how, how I don't think it works for the players we've got. And they um, they just got through it, no problems whatsoever. And, and to be fair, it could have been four or five. I thought Villa looked tired. They looked as though they didn't really know what they were doing. Barkley gave the ball away too many times in, in areas you shouldn't, shouldn't give the ball in. The defence got battered. Watkins did well up front because he was on his own. He had no support. But Leeds thoroughly deserved the win. And it was a, it, without, if it wasn't Villa, I'd have loved watching Leeds play. Yeah, what's your take on Villa, Phil? Uh, well, me and be Daz very been... careful. Be very careful. <laughs> me and Daz, I mean, Daz has taken me quite a few times to Villa Park. Uh, so we've seen him at sort of championship level, yeah. obviously, and now you're coming up to the Premier League. Like, there's been so many times where we've watched them in the championship, and and even Daz has said like they they seem to lack that sort of like desire. Even like Grealish is almost had like a, a a renaissance, even though he's such a young player. Like compared to when we saw him, Daz, he, he yeah. almost looked a bit uninterested, or, or maybe he got he felt a bit too big for the club. But this has spared him on the opposite way now. I thought Villa started quite well. Like, like uh, some of the play, they, they seem quite dominant. And then I, I think Leeds have been playing outstandingly like this se- this season. But yet the results just haven't gone their way. Like what a sign and Bielsa was oh, yeah. for them. Like uh, completely out the blue. Um, I I like Bamford quite a lot. I watch. Have you watched the uh, the Leeds documentary on Amazon? 
I've started watching it and I haven't watched it all, but I've watched oh, it. Amazing, like amazing. And a lot of the Leeds fans were getting on his back quite a lot, thinking he wasn't probably good enough yeah. even for their level at, uh, at the Championship. But I just think he's someone who, who will work his socks off, but yet he's actually a quality, quality footballer, right, left foot, header. Um, so I, I said to Daz, like after that Villa game, that I, I thought Everton were going to get beat separately as well. But it just shows you, like, sometimes these results can sort of go in your favour quite a lot, and then there's just a massive switch, isn't it? Yeah. It's I so mean, hard to predict. That was a that was an odd one. I thought Bamford's hat trick was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Very different types of goals played really well. But Thomas, you thought that they were going to struggle as well, didn't you? Because Phillips was out, um, and there was a couple of other players that were out. So you thought Leeds were going to struggle in that game? I did, yeah, I did. The one thing I picked up from that game was. Adrian Duran, who I, I can't stand off talk sports, he brought up a thing about Grealish through the week and he hit the nail right on the head. I hate agreeing with him. It was all about Grealish being really greedy around the box and he, he showed it. He, 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 brilliant move, quick feet, got in the box, went past a couple of defenders and Ollie Watkins has stood there completely on his own at the far post. It was a four or five yard pass and it's a tap in. And Grealish just didn't let it go. Danced past, nice skill, danced past a couple of defenders, hit the goalkeeper at his knees, which would have set the tone for the rest of the game because Villa were on top at, the, at that point and really poor. But then what I don't like about him is, I don't know, it was just before or just after, he's dancing along the area with the ball and he goes down at the touch of a feather. He's the most foul player in the Premiership because you blow on his neck and he doesn't go, ooh, he just falls over. <laughs> Phil, Phil, I don't know if you've seen that. What a lovely bit of that movement. Was he just, well, that was to, to be fair, like even the intonation in your voice, mate, you've got such range. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? I don't know what that word means, but sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think he, did, he, does, uh, he do, does like to, to go down easy. Well, stop uh, kicking him. It's as simple, <laughs> simple as. <laughs> well, we call them kickstars. Anyway, <laughs> the, the game finished 3-0. I thought Leeds um, fully deserved the win. And I think you're right, Phil. They've been playing really well. The results haven't quite gone their way because of the way they play. Yeah. But I also thought one of the big things to take away from that game was they were much stronger at the back. I didn't think Villa did that great against them, putting them under pressure. Watkins is a quality player. Grealish could have had a better game. I totally agree with you. Daz Barkley was not great in the game at all. But what a win for 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 Leeds, um, you know. And just on that, players. Barkley, Barkley does do that quite a lot. He'll have he'll have like some quality games, and then he'll just he'll just go missing. So that's that's what Villa have got to try and somehow get that consistency to his game because he'll come up with like some worldies, yeah. and Fair then he'll and they'll go missing for a couple of games. Then you could have told us that before we loaned them for a year. <laughs> <laughs> and they've only got it for a, only got it for a month otherwise. <laughs> All right, so the next game was uh, on Saturday early, uh, West Ham versus Man City, and it finished 1-1, and Antonio scored an absolute whopper over it. Well, I mean, would you call it? It was more or less an overhead kick, uh, and then Costa scored um, to, to make it 1-1. But, I mean, what a, what a goal that was. It was Phil Foden. Oh, was it Foden? It wasn't Costa who scored, it was Foden, yeah. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, he is a decent goal as well. Um, but I think the uh, the Antonio goal was the, the thing that stood out for me. Yeah, I, I you know, Thomas has championed uh, Antonio for a while now on, on the podcast. He does, he loves him. And I and I mentioned about a couple of weeks ago how I'm surprised that a, a, I don't want to diss any West Ham fans that, that listen. I don't think they do. I think we'll get away with it. But I am surprised a bigger club haven't come in for him because I think... As a, as a forward, I think he's got pace, he's got strength, he holds the ball up well, he can finish. And, and you know, you're looking at Man United who are struggling, for, I think, for a striker. I think he'd work well at United. I really do. I think he's, you know, he's in that Mark Hughes ilk, if you like, where he, he's just a strong lad who can play. And I, I would have, if I was United, I wouldn't have brought Crestle in. I'd have gone for um, Antonio. But he's got ability as well, hasn't he? He's yeah, good not player. just big and strong. And then, yeah, you're right, Tom. Foden come on in the, um, later in the game and, and scored and did really well, changed the game in the second half. But yet again, we're not seeing the City that you would expect to see. They didn't look great. What's your take on City this year, Phil? Uh, I said to Daz, uh, like letting Silver go. Uh, I think it's yeah. not just, just the football and ability because he actually played like almost every game to the leads up to the end of the last season. You've now let uh, him go. 
you've let a company go. I think even just having those players in the background, I think they're, they're massive leadership. They know the club. They've been there for years. They're winners. Like company's goal a couple of years ago that actually basically won them the league over Liverpool. Just having those players there. Sorry to rub that. I'm not we don't talk that about in, that Thomas. goal enough, Phil. I don't Sorry. think on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. Just had to get that in there. Um, but I think that's one of their biggest problems. Obviously, they're trying to bring like Foden in, who's a massive talent. But I think just having people behind, and obviously they've let Arteta go as well to, to Arsenal. So there's a lot of uh, seminal key figures in the background of, uh, of that team. And I think potentially that potentially is why they're struggling with a massive hole in their defence. And uh, they've only got Aguero and Jesus up top and they've been injured in and out quite a bit. So, yeah, I, I think that they're major uh, areas that they needed to look at. But they said they just couldn't afford to buy a, a tough quality. Well, they spent striker. 400 million on defenders. So Exactly, yeah. So, Thomas, the... Um... Uh, he, again, you, you've got a, a fancy in for Antonio, but we were talking last week about this whole issue of Pep losing his head on the line, having an impact on the players, and them starting to panic. We had more of that at the weekend again, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. I th- in the first half, West Ham, first 25 minutes, were very good. And they did all the things that City didn't like, put them under load of pressure, uh, got the ball, got them turned quite a bit. Uh, and they did, you're right, they lost their head, they, they went, a, what a great goal, I've got to disagree with Darren, I think there's absolutely no point in United signing a player like Antonio, when they've just got rid of a carbon copy, younger and better, in uh, the lad they've just sent it, Lukaku, who they sold to into Milan, yeah, very, very fun. similar player, and they didn't use him, they didn't use him at the best of his ability, and, play, and, and played their football to suit his game, and they'd do the same if they brought Antonio in, Second half, City created numerous opportunities. Uh, and if Sterling had his shooting boots on, mm. uh, they would have won that game th- 3-1, probably 4-1. Uh, they were poor in front of goal and they're, they're, they're desperately missing uh, Aguero and Jesus just to give them, like we discussed last week, they haven't got their, their, the options or the movements up front. Uh, what a natural striker would do, peeling off and, and creating space or making them runs. To, to create space for the other forward. And, you know, I was delighted because I thought West Ham would do well. And I think I, I wasn't far off or I may have even got the results. I'm not too sure. Uh, I predicted that last week. So, great result for us, Liverpool, because I still think at the end of the season, whoever finishes above City will win the league. Yeah, does have you got the predictions? Uh, I have, but not on me. They're, uh, right, over the... I'll, I'll sort them out when we're talking about the next one. So, the next game was um, Fulham and Crystal Palace. And I don't know about anyone else. But this bored me to death. <laughs> um, it ended Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 1. Um, Zaha scored a decent goal. Um, but I, the game was just really, really poor. I just couldn't get into it at all. And I'll watch any football. But it, it was just not great at all. Anyone see anything memorable in this game? No, I think someone had an orange at half-time, which went down quite well. But, but apart from that, that was it. I can and just say, I did predict Fulham to get the first win. And their talisman, Fulham, Mitrovic, he's missing chances, mm-hmm. yeah. which in, in the championship, he was putting away. And if he did suck his chances, Fulham might have got their their first win of the season because he had enough of them in the game. And Palace just did what you usually do. And, and we've talked about enough with having a really solid in midfield and then get it up. And if Sahar's on his game, he actually played quite well. But it was a... Definitely an opportunity lost by Fulham. And if Mitrovic had been on as a game, it would have been a lot better. He would have had a much better chance of winning. Just on that, Thomas, that Mitrovic, he basically didn't do anything at Newcastle when he was up there. And I don't think, in my own opinion, is I don't think he's a Premier League striker. I think he's a very good championship striker. I think that's your problem. I think in the Premier League, you get maybe two chances a game, possibly yeah. three. You need to be scoring one. In the championship, you can get five, six or seven and you can score one. And and people look at the goals rather than how many chances it, it being created at ratio. So I do think Mitrovic, he's full of talisman. You, you're so right on that. But actually, he's not a Premier League striker, in my opinion. No, I agree. Phil? I think, yeah, I think there was something I saw there. There was like, uh, for Fulham, they were averaging 3,000 plus passes per goal. 
and that's like that's like Highland City. Do you know what I mean? Who are obviously all about pass, 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 score. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously, I think one of the the plus sides for um, Fulham is Luckman. Obviously, yeah. he started yeah. it. He started at us. Yeah. Uh, and, and he started quite well for for them. I think. I mean, he hit the post like twice the other day, didn't he? Uh, right foot. Yeah. Thing with Luckman, he's quick. He's young. He's agile, and he's got an amazing left foot. Yeah. And so I think they need to be trying to present him with more opportunities just to shoot. And I think that's one of the things that Scott Parker was saying, like particularly when you're playing with such a tight midfield and back four, if you get the uh, ball outside the box, have a pop. Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> happy wait. at all, was he? Yeah. He was not impressed. He waited to the last, basically the last kick of the game to have a, a strike outside the goal. And it's like, that's obviously, he, he's basically saying the same thing in every uh, press interview just after the game. Is that almost? It almost seems to me like the team aren't thinking for themselves enough or quick enough at the level they need to to, to get some results. But he has to be careful with that because Scott yeah. Parker was a proponent of passing sideways. So <laughs> Scott Parker was a decent footballer to put a tackle in, but what he was known for most was the the old kind of Jamie Redknapp <clears throat> type uh, mm-hmm. moniker. He used to constantly he'd get the ball in midfield he wouldn't move the game forward and he'd just pass it sideways all the time. So maybe they're just molding themselves on, on how yeah. he played. But yeah, he's yeah. got to solve that problem because I, I think you're right, um, Daz, the uh, Mitrovic is a quality footballer, quality striker at championship level. That seems clear now. You couldn't really tell when he was in the championship because he's getting chances and he's putting them away and he's probably getting more, he, he's probably getting more chances there but he's definitely been found out a little bit at this level and, and, and you're just not going to get the change out of the, uh, out of the defenders, even, even when the defenders are not playing that well. Um, he's just not getting enough. And also, um, he scores a lot of his goals in the air and you know, you've just got better fen- defenders that are going to position themselves mm-hmm. better and do better to, to stop and score. Um, just to go back to the scores, uh, this is what we had. Villa uh, <clears throat> leads. I had 2-1 for Villa. Thomas had 2-0 for Villa and Dan had 2-0 for Villa. We were obviously all wrong. Man, Man City, West Ham. Uh, we, I had Man City winning 3-1. Thomas had West, uh, West Ham winning 2-1. Uh, and Darren had uh, Man City winning 3-0. Yeah, I get excited on these. Fulham, Crystal Palace. Uh, I had 0-0. Thomas had 1-0 to Fulham. And Darren had 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Uh, so... Dad and actually got the result right, but not the uh, not the score. Um, so the next game. Now we thought this was going to be the best game of the weekend. So I think we talked about this one for a while. It was the Man United uh, versus Chelsea game, and it finished nil nil. So I actually watched this game because I was thinking this is going to be the game to watch. Was I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shocking. There was a real lack of quality in the game. There was no real desire to go out and, and put yourself out there and win the game. It didn't appear that anyone was really working that hard. There wasn't that many chances in the game. It was boring. It, it just it did, just didn't pan out the way we expected it to be. Very poor. I think we should just talk about the one major talking point was the non-penalty, which was an absolute disgrace. Yeah. Absolute disgrace. I mean, there's four of us on here. Does anybody think it wasn't a penalty? I um, I think Maguire does that all the time. No, Thomas, if I'm honest with you, he gets the wrong side of, of strikers. Definitely pen, de- definitely a book, of, if not more. Actually, I've heard uh, Vince McMahon from WWE has been in touch <laughs> and he's possibly getting a tag team partner with John Cena. So, <laughs> what I'm saying, Maguire's got a career after football. He basically had him in a rear naked choke. <laughs> ridiculous. The best thing about it is there's loads of memes going around of Azpilicueta's face as he's being taken down. Oh. In the <laughs> I mean, it was not good. He's just not... He, I mean, he's been shocking most of this year. I think he's had one good game so far um, this season. But uh, what a disappointment for yeah. Speaking on the Defenders Union with Daz, though, it was a clean sheet, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> me, and Daz, me and Daz were thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put, right, but let's not hang around on that one. Too. Yeah, let's not talk about the worst on, game then. of the weekend. <laughs> so then the uh, the next game was Liverpool, uh, Sheffield United, and in fact, let's go. Let's see what we had the scores as before we move on. So for Man United, Chelsea, I had three two because I thought it was going to be high scoring because their defenses has been so poor. 
Uh, Thomas had 2-1 to United and Darren had 3-2 to Chelsea. Could we have been more wrong? Yeah, yeah. I think we joked on it saying this would be nil nil this. Exactly. I think someone joked, yeah. So Liverpool, Sheffield United was the next game. Um, Firmino and Jota scoring for Liverpool. And then obviously there was the uh, penalty incident for Sheffield United. Let's get you started on this one, Thomas. What was your take on the game? Well, I thought credit to Sheffield United. Uh, they come at us really well from the off, put us under a bit of pressure. Never in a million years is that a penalty. I don't care. VAR is a load of me ass this last couple of weeks. What is going beep, on? Beep. <laughs> What's going on though? So, quite clearly, if it was a foul, which it wasn't, it was a penalty because his foot was on the line when he kicked him. So, I get that part. What part of, let's go and check whether it was an actual foul? Oh, no, he clearly wins the ball. He doesn't touch the man. Comes round the side of him. Brilliant challenge. Play on. No. Penalty. Are you having a giraffe? <laughs> I just can't believe it. It was just disgusting. But I've got to say, uh, the, the, the Ogo Jota has fitted in absolutely brilliantly so far for Liverpool. Three goals in his first four, four or five games. Looks like... You know, if we need to take any one of the front three out, he's going to fit in perfect. And also, it's putting a bit of pressure on uh, Firmino, and it's also putting a bit of pressure on Klopp. And I think, with that in mind, that's why he decided to play Firmino in a more withdrawn role, which we talked about last season on the podcast, Darren, if you remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. He said about playing him more in midfield. Forget about his goal threat. Get it, get it on the ball and a bit more creativity deeper in the park and see how it goes. I mean, we were very disjointed at times in the first half, but second half, once he had a word of them and sort of said, no, listen, we're all chasing after the ball. We look a bit ragged. Hold your position a bit more. And, you know, the goals were going to come. And I just want to say, he doesn't get enough credit. Salah, Salah's goal, I know it was offside. But it, was a thing, it was a thing of beauty. The control yeah. and the finish was superb. I mean, it was very, it wasn't so, it was like his reaction for the goal in the derby. You know, no thoughts, just yeah. down, bang, and in you go. Absolutely superb. We can move on now because I've just covered everything. Well, <laughs> well, Blue, what are your thoughts on uh, how that game went? Uh, I, again, I felt a bit sorry for Sheffield United because they've been a team sort of uh, similar to Leeds where they probably haven't got sometimes what they deserve. Um, but and I, they're doing I, better I, as well as the yeah. season goes. Oh, massively, yeah. I would question, because uh, obviously you had to put... Uh, Fabinho at the centre back is that a, a risk of putting a uh, midfielder in that they might make slightly rash tackles? And would you have? Would you do? You still think you need to go out and? Well, you probably do now. I think is by a, a centre half, yeah. a top quality, top top quality centre half. Thanks, so Phil. I, I, I just I on that, I think I am available most of the <laughs> but you'd have to speak to Thomas. Didn't well, your, I do kids, didn't your kids in school say that you'd signed for someone for 20-odd million? Oh, yeah, 20-odd yeah. million, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, um, so, I, th I mean, when, when uh, Verge got injured, my immediate thought was it has to be Fabinho because yeah. I take your point that he is definitely going to be a little bit more rash than um, Verge is, but some of most defenders, never yeah. mind midfielders. But I actually think that tackle, I don't think he actually needed, needed to make the tackle. He could have jockeyed mm. him and, and, and took him away from the goal. But... It was a good tackle, so it was, yeah. difficult to, to complain about it. Mm -hmm. But now we're in a position where right up until that game, or the, the game just gone, I'd have, I'd have said, don't go and buy a centre-half in, in January. But I think we almost might have to now, depending on how bad the uh, Fabinho in this, uh, injury mm -hmm. is. Because yet again, Gomez um, played last night and was not great again. It just yeah. doesn't seem to be getting close enough to the man. Doesn't seem to be getting his position... In, right and and I just think he's a little bit lost maybe he needs taken out the team for a while but now that's not going to happen he's going to be in every week and I just yeah. don't think he's where he needs to be it's just just on that side I think some players some players like to be guided and so they, they don't have to do the thinking Van Dyke guided the other center halves through the game and so they just listened and he did what it, when he's not there you lose that you lose that person who's going to guide you and who's going to set things up to so go back onto the penalty as soon as you go to ground anywhere near the box, you, you've got a chance of giving away that penalty. My immediate reaction as a defender was no pen. But people going on about the line, and 
if it's on the line, it's it's a, it's a foul, it's a pen. I personally uh, of the view of he get, got the ball with his right foot, and it was a good uh, tackle with his right foot. He nipped the ball, not a problem. Where where he he goes wrong is he brings his left foot through, and what that does it it allows the officials to make a decision, and I think that was the issue. Am I am I honestly going to say it's a pen? I'm going to say no. But what he's done is he's give the he's give the officials that opportunity. The problem we're having in the Premier League at the moment is the inconsistencies that we're seeing week in and week out, game to game. And I think that's what's getting the fans. When we saw Harry Maguire's and then we saw that one, they were miles apart, and yet the one that was a pen wasn't, and the one that wasn't was. And I think that's where I'm at at the moment with it all. It's happening in every game as well, isn't it? You're seeing you're seeing decisions that you're thinking, I have no idea how they've come to that decision. And then you're seeing others where they're not even looking at it. And that's the, the thing that I find more confusing. What is a what is a, an obvious mistake by the referee, and how do you how are you classifying that? And then how are you not doing things properly? Like the you know we go back to the the derby. How are you not following the process correctly when yeah. um, Pickford takes out um, Virgil Van Dijk? Again, there was a load of hoo-ha after that, which we don't agree with. But at the time, if they'd done their job properly, that had resulted it would have resulted in him going off. But if there's no consistency around when you're going to access the the monitor to have a look at it, then how can anyone know what's coming? I mean, it's like people when, when teams are scoring goals now, no one's celebrating. Because there's yeah. been so many that have been chalked yeah. off. Yeah. Just just on the Virgil, um, there's, um, I, I think it's, when any player gets injured like that, it's quite sad. And I don't want to harp on it too much, but... It is sad when he was injured, and we, we don't know how serious it could be. It could be career ending. It could be out for six to nine months. And I hope he comes back. And I hope he comes back stronger because I, I, I as a defender, like to see him play and watch him play. But I think it's a massive hole for Liverpool. And I think mm. if they don't react in January, it could be bigger than what everyone thinks it's going to be. I, I agree. And but one of the most embarrassing things that I've seen afterwards was, did you see the picture of Memphis? Yeah, this <laughs> so he scored a goal and he had a t-shirt yeah. on saying, uh, you know, Verge get well soon. I mean, it just people just need to drop yeah. it. It's yeah, you know, he's not a messiah. He's just a footballer now. Obviously, Phil, Phil lift your shirt up. What have you got on yours? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get well soon, Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's move to the uh, to the next game, which is uh, one that will be close to Phil's heart, which is Southampton uh, versus Everton. Um, uh, obviously not a great result 2-0 uh, for Southampton uh, first half uh, I think they looked totally in control Ward Prowse and Shea Adams scored and, and how Shea Adams got that time to score that goal is ridiculous Yeah. Um, but then the, one of the big things that happened in that game was um, Dinya's red card mm -hmm. and so give us your take on the game and, and the, right. the, the highlights uh, I, I, you know I, I, I don't like to uh, criticise people because like you, you, to, to play in the Premier League, you've obviously got to be a quality player. You've got to be, you know, if you played against them, you, you, I'd get completely rinsed. But the problem with that game, when you watch it back, a Wobi, because oh, that that left side, the the goal, both goals come from that side. Mm. So obviously, teams out of position. But then when you watch a Wobi jogging back, and it's like. To play for Everton, you don't have to be the best player, but you have to give every single thing you've got. And every time I've seen a Wobie play, he's obviously got must have bags of ability and he must be able to produce it in training, but he's not doing what he's made for on the pitch. So both of those goals, so it's, particularly with, even though Rodriguez is amazing and can get away with it, he doesn't really like to track back that yeah. much. And a Wobie doesn't track back at all. So I think once you're... Allowing like a two v one in any of those situations, it's bound to cause trouble. I when Villa got beat the other day, I said to Dallas, I texted you, didn't I? I said, I think the Southampton Everton game could be really challenging. I think Danny, I I, I just love Danny Ings to be yeah. honest. I just think he's so potent, but he but he's such an intelligent player. With where he took it round Pickford was it last season and just slotted it in. You know, he made him look like an absolute fool. Um, Southampton have had a massive renaissance. War Prowse is is an outstanding, yeah. technically gifted football player, as anyone can see. And to be honest, I think I think we deserve to get beat. To be honest with you, and I think that comes down to the lack of quality in reserves that we have once our starting eleven. But that's the problem with Everton. That's been the way for probably since Moyes. If I'm being yeah. honest with you, 
You've got to think that Ancelotti will solve that problem, now, given yeah. his strategy so far. But what's your take on Nadinha red card? I, I I actually watched it back about five times before I came on because uh, I thought it'd come up. At first, I thought it was a it was a definite red, and then the more I watch it, I, the more I just think he's he's just trying to get back, and he's not actually clocking it when you watch his eye line. It's on the player; it's not down. So I, I think also as well, uh, the right back, what's his name? Uh, he come from Tottenham. He got injured. Uh, I can't remember what his name. Is. Oh, what what Peters? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Walker Peters. Sorry. Um, I think he just left his his leg behind as he was. I think he must have been going to pass or whatever. I, I genuinely just think it was an accident. Mm-hmm. But because Richarlison and obviously the the Pickford incident, I think maybe that's why. A red was branded straight away. I mean, it was rescinded to like a, a, a one match ban, but I, I, I think it was just accidental. But it could have easily broke his ankle. Yeah. So, uh, that's what you take. My, my take is it was a yellow all day. Um, if you look at the stride patterns, the stride pattern just happened to collide. And you could see him as he was running back, he was already doing yeah. this. I just think it was a yellow all day. It looked worse than what it probably was, if, yeah. if we're honest with it. I think Everton. When you play for Everton Football Club, you've got to have two things, desire and work rate. And, you know, and I think for me, Everton didn't show that against Southampton. Southampton looked sharper. Southampton wanted the ball more. They had a better shape in the team. And I think Everton just lacked a little bit of quality and a little bit of leadership that, they, that they've had over the last couple of games. And also, when you've won a few games, you, you get more confidence. You try more things instead of keeping those basics, doing the basics well. Villa and Everton have been caught out last weekend massively mm. by, by the same things. And I think they need to go back to basics this weekend. We're playing Southampton this, this Sunday and it's going to be a massive test for us because um, I think Southampton might, might do it again. Yeah. Thomas, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I'm shaking my head because I think when you sign for Everton, they make you watch the football factory. <laughs> and then, <laughs> because... Literally, it's just like a gang of yobs. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrendous. That poor Walker Peters may never play again after that challenge. Hey, my T-shirt says. Yeah, let's, uh, get, a yeah, let's get a T-shirt <laughs> out. Hey, literally, it was it was terrible. Now it it's obviously accidental, but he is he's got hurt, and I can see why the referees brandished yeah. the red. But my thing that I was laughing at the most was, Simon brought it up earlier on, was Che Adam, Adams, isn't it? He had, yeah. he had quite a while to take his shot. But I don't know whether you noticed the angle that he, he took his shot from. The angle was, was very acute. And little T-Rex arms <laughs> sort of like dive past the ball. <laughs> it was weird because I was trying to watch the replays of how he scored. I was thinking, how's he scored from there? How's he scored this? Can he not see? Is the fella in front of him when he shoots and T Rex arms can't see? No. He just sort of dives out the way. It no, wasn't it even a... He hit the defender's leg and, bang, and, and, and bounced yeah. down under him. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> 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 he has got little arms, like, but I don't know whether you can blame him for that. Or maybe I've just ignored the fact that it's his leg and I just. <laughs> yeah, selective yeah. memory. They need, they need Dinya back as well, don't they? Because he's been doing really well for them. Oh, honestly, mate, he's he's like he's like Leighton Baines reincarnated. He's he's a he's an amazing, amazing player for us. I mean, we've got Encondu. I don't know if you've seen any much of him. Uh, he's, he seems like a quite a nifty player, but obviously stepping into the Premier League, an important game where we need to win. It, it depends. Well, Richarlison won't be back, will he? So uh, that's I think we're going to struggle again, to be honest. Yeah, it's going to be a hard weekend. Um, uh, I, although, uh, if you're playing buzzword bingo, nifty has just been used yeah, on the yeah, podcast think, for the first time. So I, I, I didn't have that, nifty. I had swell. So <laughs> I've, I've missed yeah. out there. From the same group of words, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, would you, would you think that the word nifty would be used by someone from Kirby? <laughs> <laughs> Next game Can, can was... I just confirm, Si? He has got new toilet roll. Okay, got Next it. Next word, word of the week. week. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next comes uh, Thomas's uh, favourite teams outside of Liverpool, Wolves, who he has a fancy in for, and our big heads team, uh, Newcastle. Fat head. Fat head. Big, Man, I'm trying to be nice. Head. You big can't say head. big head. He's got a big fat head. <laughs> uh, the game finished one-one. Uh, him and Es scored, uh, which was good to see. 
Um, but again, wasn't a great game. Uh, I, I don't think there was much in it between the two teams as well. Newcastle haven't been great, haven't showed that well away from home as well. Um, I think Wolves probably should have won the game, but uh, again, not, not a massive amount in it. Anyone see anything interesting? Yeah. Jimenez, Jimenez scored his first goal for Wolves from outside the box. Now, you wouldn't believe that. But yeah, but I mean, surely the, the deflection was ridiculous as well. Yeah, he can't claim that. Is he claiming he that? Well, he went across the box, box come back, but then, I mean, he basically hit the shot the other way. Yeah, oh, he, no. it's a good yeah. goal. Yeah, he didn't goal. see the deflection on Pickford, but that Jimenez one he saw. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Jimenez at the moment is the only thing that, that uh, Wolves have got at the moment. I think he's playing really well. The, the, it's not happening for Wolves to see for whatever reason. Uh, and Newcastle are just going to be grinding out results. Average you know, team, aren't they? Yeah, they're not as nifty as some of the other players, as some of the other teams in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> it's that look, look at that look. <laughs> yeah, no, they, uh, they're, not, they're not looking good. I think, um, I think actually it wasn't a bad result for Newcastle away from home to Wolves getting those results. Result. Yeah. It was how poor, how poor Newcastle played, to be honest. But another yeah. thing that's sort of been coming out in the press is the Newcastle fans uh, starting to turn against Steve Bruce. And, and Darren said it the same. He, he plays in a certain way that you can, it, it would wind it up. But they've really struggled. They struggled under Benitez. They've struggled under the, the previous regimes. And Steve Bruce has got them. They're not near the bottom. Oh, sorry. They're yeah. not in the bottom three or immediately just outside. They're, I think they're a few places up. And I think he's always got them quite early to safety with like four or five games to go rather than, you know, going to the last game and, and taking a chance on going down. Until they've got some decent finances coming into the club and they can compete against the teams that, not even the top six, the teams that are in 10th and the type of players that they're going for to bring in the club to, to boost the ranks. I think they, they need to have a, a manager like Bruce that knows how to keep a team in the league. And you've got to look at the bigger picture and say, do you know what? This football may be rubbish at the moment, but when we get some better players in, you know, we need to stay in the league first and foremost. Let's get that done. But I know they're not going to accept that Newcastle. They want to be playing this Kevin Keegan-style football and going on everyone and scoring goals. But if it takes you down, you know, yeah, yeah. you're know, seeing how long it took them to get back up. It's not, it's, you know, they've got to, they've got to stick with them, I think. Yeah. The, the big thing for Newcastle, for Steve Bruce, is to keep them the Prem. Because if, if they get sold or up for sale, no one will want them in the Championship. Yeah. Because he won't want to sell it because he'll lose so much money. And the buyer won't invest because they think, will they get out the championship? So him, his, his remit this year is to keep them in the Premier League so they're an attractive offer for someone to buy them. And that's his remit. But Phil, don't you think they, uh, Newcastle struggle in the, uh, in the championship? I don't think Newcastle are a bounce-back team. No. I think they go down, they're staying down. Definitely. I, I, I find it, like coming from Benitez, do you know what I mean? It's like he was a bit like a messiah for them, do you know what I mean? So it's, it's such a hard thing to win over the fans. And he, and he did do that for quite a while but I think obviously the biggest problem is is the Mike Ashley effect on the back of that the the hero that Chira was and the team that they had like Nobby Solano all that type of uh player like Aspria and all that sort of all these quality players and they're a massive club Newcastle but unfortunately the the they're being led I think in the wrong way and there's just a massive negativity that's channeled towards him at the top yeah. But it's sort of it's festering around the club, so until late until he goes, I, I can't see them fulfilling yeah. the potential that they've been probably trying to show for quite a few years. Yeah, because they're a massive club; they yeah. should yeah. be doing better. Yeah. Uh, who, who had festering? Did you have festering, Thomas? No. Did, if anyone had that, they they can have all the points. <laughs> can, I, can I just say, if I need to know all these big words, <laughs> no chance of being an actor. People. Phil's doing some uh, acting lessons with you, so you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Fine. Auto cue, Tom. Auto cue. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the scores. In the... Slow I can't read fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so the scores in the last three that we had was um, for Liverpool, Sheffield United. We had we all had uh, Liverpool winning. Me and Thomas had three 0 Darren had four 0 So we got the result right. Didn't get the score right. Southampton, Everton. Um, I had Everton winning two one. Thomas had Southampton winning 2-0. Then 
Darren had 1-1. One, one. You're wrong again, Daz. Again, uh, again. There's a pattern here. Uh, I had Wolves winning 3-1 against Newcastle. Thomas had Wolves winning 1-0 because he loves them. And Darren had Wolves winning 2-1. Uh, so next game was Arsenal versus Leicester. And again, we thought this would be a decent game as well. Finished 1-0 for Leicester. And uh, Vardy was having a party again. Yeah, I just think they cancelled each other out. I don't think there was much much in the game at all. But when you've got Vardy up front, he's going to get two or three chances in the game. He'll put one away. Yeah. Because when Vardy's not in Leicester, they're not the same team. Mm-hmm. And I think Leicester, I don't know, Vardy 31 now, something like that, 32. Are you going you to know, pretend that that's old, Daz? Because if you are, then we are really old. It, to be fair, to be playing the Premier League, I don't know if we're going to do that now, Si. I don't want to break the bubble. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> But I do, I do think they need to be looking now for the next player like Vardy if they're keeping the same style. Because if once he goes Vardy in the next year or two or whatever, they either have to change the style or go and get another Vardy. And yeah. that's hard to find. Um, and I think, I think Leicester haven't really lit up the Premier League yet. I think Arsenal are still trying to rebuild something there with Arteta. There's issues over uh, this party guy, whether it was him who bought it or it was the um, Edu, the the director of football I think the director of football and Arteta and any manager always are conflicts because they're not their players who they buy in so already we're seeing little cracks in Arsenal at the moment um, I'd be interested to see what happens in the next transfer window with them I just think Leicester not quite fine Madison's back playing now though yeah. um, which is important for them but you wouldn't have that result wouldn't have looked odd last year Leicester beating Arsenal at Arsenal but it looks odd this year because mm. Leicester have not started that well mm. they haven't yeah. looked good and to beat Arsenal away from home, I think that's a great result for Leicester. Yeah. It's a fantastic result. And if you watch the first half, Arsenal will up to the first hour. Leicester sat back, soaked the ball of pressure. They brought Vardy on for the last half an hour, 20 minutes. And then they had options and they just changed the style and went at Arsenal. Arsenal had been knocking on the door, didn't know what to do. And then got caught out. And uh, I think it was Tielemans, brilliant ball in. Yeah. And then... Vardy on the end of the cross. I mean, it was superb. It was counter attacking football at its best, but they didn't have that option in the first half because they've only got Ian Nacho, is it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, so they didn't really have them options to do it. As soon as Vardy come on, they, it, give, it lifted the Leicester side, give them more options. They were able to then have a go back at Arsenal. And because they were so deep in the first hour, they were able to push out more because Arsenal had to drop because they worried about Vardy's pace. It was just great. Tactically, mm. Uh, Rogers got it spot on, and with with Vardy coming on for twenty minutes to go or half an hour to go, he was he was the main difference between the two of them. But he chases lost causes as well, doesn't he? So he yeah. he's one of those strikers where nothing is ever dead. Um, Phil, uh, you, you were talking earlier about Everton. Imagine Everton having someone like him up front. Oh, I, I, I've bored Daz to death with this. Like like Jamie Vardy would have been a, what a player he would have been for us. There's no way we would have been able to get him. But I think. Going back to that, when you look at like Arsenal's back line, they were virtually sitting on the halfway line because they knew no one had the pace yeah. in the first half, at least until Vardy came on to go that way. And then all of a sudden, once that first goal for Arsenal got chalked off, I think if that would have went in, I think the game would have been slightly different because then obviously uh, Leicester would have had to push. Yeah. But then Tielemans, as you said there, he must have played that ball about three or four times as soon as Vardy come on because he knew what all Vardy wanted yeah. to do. All of a sudden, you're just throwing it behind them. Yeah, um, what he, he, he's he's just a vulture, isn't he? There's another word for you, Daz, a vulture. Oh, Watch that one in there. That's a cracker. Love that. There you go. He's but you know there. what? I do think that is one of uh, Leicester's downfalls, though, because when Vardy is not on fire, then they mm-hmm. really struggle because they continue to play that ball all the time. Yeah. And although even when he's not playing that well, he's chased, still chasing lost causes. They have games and they've had them this year where he hasn't been firing, and they've really struggled to get going because. Harvey Barnes is a quality footballer, but mm-hmm. not a Vardy replacement. Yeah. And he's not going to score the goals that Vardy scores. So they get a little bit lost. Back to what we were saying earlier about, you know, you, you can't have a, a £40 million striker sitting on a bench. It doesn't work like that. And yeah, we had for, for that... Of injuries. Go on, Tom. Tons of injuries, Leicester as well. Yeah. So that sort of accounts for the, the poor start of the season. The big players that produced so much for them last year, the majority of them have been injured this year. So yeah. they've struggled. Okay, so the scores that we had for that, we all had Arsenal winning. So I had 2-0, Darren had 2-1, and Thomas, you had 3-0. So we were all well off. 
Um, so then we moved to Monday night, and uh, actually I thought the games were really poor on Monday. Uh, we had uh, Brighton against West Brom, finish 1-1. Uh, th- there was an own goal in that, and someone called Grant scored. So that was relatively interesting. That was probably the most interesting part of the game. Um, I, I, I'm bored of, of West Brom now. I, I like to watch Brighton. I think Brighton are a decent team. They're, they're not at it this year much at all. Not playing as well as they were last year. But I think West Brom look really, really poor. They are nailed on to go down. Mm. They don't seem to be able to really get going. And I think as we get into the kind of middle of the season, they're going to start drifting away and, and they're going to be in the bottom three for the rest of the season. Um, Billich will go by Christmas because they've already sold a player behind his back. That's not good for any manager. Yeah, He'll either leave on his own accord or he'll just get sacked by Christmas. And it, it's, it's sad, really, because you, you know, no one wants to see that because they haven't invested. I mean, if you don't invest in the Premier League, you end up where you end up. And, and that's the bottom line. You know, it's, if you're starting to sell your, your better players without the manager knowing. Thomas, were you thinking the uh, Stone Cold there? Yeah, I was going to say, we should introduce a feature. That's the bottom line, because Darren Patterson says so. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get two cans yeah. of alcohol. Oh, Diet yeah. Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Phil, did you, uh, did you watch that game? I didn't watch that game, no. Uh, but Good, because it was I, crap. Yeah. <laughs> you, you always do find one team comes up, don't you, and it, they just, it's, yeah. like, it's like they're destined to go down. I sadly think that's what's going to happen with West yeah. Brom. Not, not we're, in in race, yeah. we? we're in a race foot between Parker and Billich to see who goes first, really. Yeah. I hope Parker stays, though, you know, because I yeah. think, although I think Fulham are useless and he's probably more likely to go first, uh, I like him. I, I, think he, I think he could mm. do something as a manager. And I love the fact that he came out at the weekend and was really not happy. And Billich is never generally happy. So it's a little bit different. But Parker come out, so he wasn't happy. That might have a bit of an impact on the players. Mm. But yeah, that was, a, uh, that was a boring game. And then the other game, um, was uh, Burnley versus Tottenham, where I, which I actually thought it was a decent game. It finished 1-0 for Tottenham, but I thought it was a good game. Burnley, I thought, d- did better than they've been doing. Um, and then Kane and Son again. I mean, they, they're getting so many goals between them this year. And also, Kane was doing a game, what we were talking about, dropping into the midfield or certainly into the kind of um, the, 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 ten, the withdrawn 10 role, getting hold of the ball. And then Son has just got... Ability and pace for days, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I think what, what's really interesting, I was speaking to my mates about this today. I've got another one, another friend, only four. <laughs> Don't be um, happy, yeah, yeah. If Kane and I, Son. I genuinely are... thought it was just me, that's I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is, Phil. So, so needy as an actor. So, <laughs> both of them at the moment they seem to be in tune with each other. Um, but if you take those two out of that team, Tottenham look average, and you know Kane only plays three months of the year. We know that. And then you've got Son. Who might... I thought it was that Kane had three months of the year off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I'm not an actor. I can't always get my lines right when someone interrupts me. <laughs> Put the auto cue back on that. <laughs> What's your call I... a strike partner as well, Darren? Son. Son is it? Son. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, I, call I, call, I call him. I call everyone son. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's the oldest here. I'm the oldest always, but. What made me laugh more than anything is that the commentators who were doing it were trying to convince the, the public that Kane meant that header to go to Son. He'd saw him or so. I'm thinking, stop lying. He just tried to put it at the back post in an area to keep it in play. But stop saying, oh, how he bent his neck. No, he didn't. He just put it in the area. But actually, Burnley, I thought, played really well on the night. Yeah, and I think um, they're starting to get their players back. They're starting to, to, to create something. I think they're going to be okay, but they do need a little bit of investment in January. Yeah, I'd agree. Phil, what's your take on uh, Tottenham's situation? Uh, have you seen, uh, again, another thing at the Amazon? Have you watched the Tottenham documentary? Yeah, we love it. I've uh, got a little soft spot for them now. Uh, amazing. Like, I don't know. I even started like Mourinho again. Yeah, do you too. know what I mean? After that. <laughs> um, it's a weird one because I've spoke, spoken to Dan about this a few times. Firstly, I couldn't understand originally why Bale didn't go to United instead of Real Madrid because I just think he's Ryan Giggs. Secondly, why is Harry Kane still at Tottenham? Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I find it baffling that, that he is still there. But him and Son have just got this like magnetic quality between them. And, and again, it is very much Harry Kane drops off a lot. Son goes in behind and then Harry Kane's there for like the 30-yard screamers if he, if he wants them. Um, I think 
I, I think it could be amazing for them if Bale picks up any other type of form that he showed at Real Madrid. And I think they could probably be back to where they want to be. Uh, maybe defensively, I know they were saying they were having issues at the back uh, towards the end of last season. But if they can keep clean sheets and just pick up one, two, no wins, I think they, they could be flying this season. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, what, what's, your, what's your take on um, the Bale situation as well and whether he'll make his way into the team? He's too good a player not to get in the side. Uh, and Tottenham, like Darren said, you take two or three players out their side and they're just an average side. They're like Everton. You know, just a... a oh, I'll tell you side. what. <laughs> but funnily enough, I don't know. I mean, like like you have been watching the the Amazon programme about it and, and it's really good. And Sky Sports this week have done a poll on who they think is going to win the league after Van Dyke's injury. And Tottenham were... 67% to win it. Wow. And I'm thinking, do you know what? We could play like a three-legged dog at centre-half and we'd still be better than Tottenham. <laughs> there yeah, are I other three-legged animals out there. <laughs> I, don't think that's, I don't think that's realistic. I've heard, I've heard things about Tottenham being potential challenges this year. I, I can't see it. I think Tottenham will do better this year than they've done in previous years um, because I do think if they can keep Kane fit and they can keep him in the side, that relationship between him and Son is, is that good that it will have a real impact. I also agree with Phil. If, if Bale starts getting involved in the game, and to your point, Tom, he's too good a player to sit on the bench. If they get him in the team and he starts influences, influencing the team, he's a quality footballer. And there's no doubt he will get them more goals. You know, he, he missed the chance last week, but he basically created it himself. He'll keep doing that and he'll get into a stride. And you've got to think that he will make a real difference. If he does... You know, they're a, they're a real challenge. Yeah, top four um, should should be absolutely aiming for top four. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, given, given the way the, the league is playing out this year, you never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes with, uh, with Verge's injury because uh, I think that has definitely thrown a spanner in the works for the Reds. All right, so listen, before we uh, finish off, Phil, and it's been a lot of fun, uh, we always ask people who come on what is their favourite football moment. So, given the fact that you've played at a at the top level, you know you've got an asterisk next to football on your yeah. profile, which tells yeah. you you're a quality footballer. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether this is going to be about playing or or watching, but what's your favourite football moment? Well, I've got two. Right. Firstly, Darren was here for one of these. Right. Okay. I'm going to deny everything. Picture this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are a bit sad. We do everything together. Uh, picture the scene, right? It's Thursday night. It's like nine till ten. The, the 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 it's pitch black. Okay, corner comes in. Yeah, straight to me. Centre back bearing in her mind. Takes it down. Lovely on the chest. Then night, as you know this, right? Nice little bounce. And I just looped it in. Top in it for a centre back. Does. I, I ran so far, I thought I was just going to run home, to be honest with you. <laughs> what a finish that was, Daz. And Daz has never stopped telling me about that, how good I am. <laughs> <laughs> was this on the Astrid turf against the kids? <laughs> yeah. And do you know what? Those eight-year-olds, they'll never play there again. <laughs> That's where the asterisk comes from. Um, but as a, as, a, as a spectator, and Thomas, you will absolutely hate me for this, but seeing David Beckham score from the halfway line, as a kid, mate, oh wow, what, what? That's the first time I've ever seen anyone do it, and it was just amazing. I know you're shaking your head, Thomas, and that, but I'm shaking my head. That feels, to be honest, I had a little bit of sick in my mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be an Evertonian. I am. You're just I am. Closet Man United fans, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not. You are, I'm not. But you shared but... this. You change it. You put that one. In. <laughs> Oh, and then you, you're torn, aren't you, when you play each other? Which one shall I wear? Tom, <laughs> he's I got on the- half and half <laughs> scarf. I love, the fact, I love the fact that the Everton fans that we know that are going to be what listening, people like Alan Yates are going to be you. going spare now. They're going to be going mad. He's I apologise. I apologise. I am, honestly, I'm a massive... I said, well, Kevin Campbell... Show us again. Go on, show us your shirts again. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, yeah. But also, Kevin, Scam- uh, Kevin Campbell scored a nice little goal against Liverpool. So that was quite a good one. As well. <laughs> yeah. That was quite a while ago. That was probably. Don't, did it. you see? Um, speaking of Beckham scoring from the halfway line, did you see Roof with the goal from? Uh, I can't remember who he played. Rangers. For. Rangers. Did you see that goal? Yeah. Yeah. Quality. Unbelievable. Quality. A big, especially because <coughs> it's from the middle of the park as well, mm-hmm. out to the wing and score. Anyway, decent goal. Awesome. 
All right, Phil. Well, listen, I didn't expect that. I did expect a blue nose uh, comment about your uh, your best football moments, but uh, it, it's pretty apt that it's. I thought he was going to use like Duncan Ferguson getting. Remember when he got a uh, hip you by the throat or something like that? Because that's the only bit of faint, you know, bit of. Listen, I, I'm not one of those. I, I'm not one of those Makes bitter fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. Well, listen, it's been brilliant having you oh, it's on. It's been a pleasure. Um, just to uh, reiterate uh, some of the some of the stuff that people can see it in because I think it's important. Uh, the uh, I'm definitely going to watch Being Keegan, um, and yeah, that's on Amazon Prime. And then the Alien, uh, the Alienist, Angel of Darkness on Netflix. Uh, everyone should have a watch of that. Anything else coming up that you want to uh, want to talk about? Uh, I've got a couple of I've got a couple of commercials coming out. Uh, but I think they're going to be in America, so I don't know whether oh, it's nice. going to be. Yeah. He's changed, yeah. Phil. He's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Has changed. I, I, honestly, changed. I know. Uh, and I've got a, a little something coming out on the internet for like uh, Thomas. That not, probably, that. <laughs> not that Thomas. Not that type of role play, mate. Unfortunately, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's no hybrid Man United Everton thing. Unfortunately, <laughs> mate. Sorry about that. Um, but it's something. I can't say what it is, but it's something that you'll you'll probably see. All right. Well, uh, listen. Internet, we'll get you. So. We'll get you back on when it comes out as well, so you can yeah. tell us about it. Oh, cheers, and man. the other thing is as well, what, what's going on with the local scene over over Christmas? Is anything going to be happening? Or uh, for me, probably probably not. Uh, I was asked uh, to do a, a few bits like panto and stuff, yeah. um, but the way it works, like particularly film and TV, if if you commit yourself to something, it means you rule yourself out for yeah, other stuff. Yeah. Um, but definitely go and check out anyone like the St. Helens Theatre Royal are doing a panto over Christmas, socially distance panto, so check them out. Uh, and like anything, just fingers crossed, see what comes up next. You've just got to keep plugging away. All right, mate. Listen, keep us posted. It's been absolutely brilliant. Oh, my you absolute happen. pleasure. I, I love the show, guys, and he's doing an amazing job. Oh, and we'll, we'll have... We can get a collab together. We'll get something sorted for the next few weeks. <laughs> Oh, mate, I tell you what, mate, I'm going to get you in a Man United top in some scene somewhere or other, mate. Honestly. You're going to be paying me a lot of money, mate, to tell you now. <laughs> You're going to be the new car, eh, mate, to tell you. <laughs> All right, Phil, thank you very much, mate. We will uh, see you again. So we'll definitely get you back on. Oh, you two Take guys. Care. Thanks so much. See you, mate. Thank you. Take care. See you later, guys. Bye. Uh, wow. That was brilliant. He was yeah. excellent, wasn't he? Brilliant. A little bit disappointed that I was in his uh, favourite football moment, but we'll, we'll, we'll address that another yeah, time. Yeah, to be fair, mate, he didn't do you any favours in that at all. And uh, do you know what? I've only nutmegged him every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be a little bit sorry about his, uh, his Beckham shout. Oh, my God, he's going to get, get hammered. Uh, in my head, when he's saying that, I'm thinking, I can see Alan Yates. <laughs> and the podcast is going absolutely spare. <laughs> Yeah. There's two things that we, we talked to him about after he got off, um, which which is hilarious. The first one is he did the advert, which he told us about with Balotelli. And he was saying that uh, he was, they were meant to be filming. Balotelli had turned up late. It, it was really dark, so they didn't have the time to do the what they were planning on doing. So, so what they said was just have a kick around with Balotelli. And they had a kick around and Bal Balotelli nutmegged them. And that was what they used in the adverts. That's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Love that. But it's Balotelli good. would be interesting to hang out with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I reckon Thomas and Balotelli on a night out, that's comedy gold. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Balotelli... Why, why me? Because I think, I think you and Balotelli hit it off like a house on fire. Honestly, I really do. <laughs> My Italian is brilliant as well, Darren. Oh, the more best. drunk you get. <laughs> All right, so the other thing that, that was hilarious as well, uh, and everyone will be able to, everyone who's watching will be able to see this. Uh, in on Phil's profile, his playing age was twenty eight to thirty four. Is he kidding himself? <laughs> he looks older than me. Twenty eight to thirty four. Yeah, I think that's a that's it's on spot like that, and I think he's got mixed up with some big numbers. Well, I reckon it's been the same for like ten years. <laughs> But he was brilliant. I love the fact that he's uh, he's so humble about it as well. You know, he's he's obviously done some really cool things, uh, and uh, you know, talks about it. He's very open about what he has to do to 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 get the roles that he's going for. Works really hard at his craft. I also love the fact that he does the local scene as well. He does the the regional scene with um, with some of the theatres. Talked about the St. Helens Theatre Royal. Um, just a thoroughly good lad. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a great mate of mine, um, and uh, he's, he's 
people don't realize in acting how hard you have to work and the commitment you have to show and the knockbacks you get every day. And he just has this positivity about him, which I love. And, and to, to be able to do what he does and still, you know, be as humble as he is, it's amazing. It's a credit to his mum, how he's been brought up. And uh, yeah, I, I love the guy. He's brilliant. Yeah, good guy. And he's a, he's a big fan of the podcast as well. But, you know, we've got to like people who like the podcast. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And he's going to give Thomas some acting lessons. I don't know whether he said he'd do it for free, though, Tom. I think you might have to pay for it. No, he's seen the talent. <laughs> Thomas, he just has to mould it now. You've got something there, he's just going to mould it. Yeah, so, come on, let's get to our final thoughts. You're somewhat <laughs> delusional, Thomas. Okay, Thomas, <laughs> why don't you lead us out with the final thoughts? Well, there's a couple of things that I've picked up on. Acting's really hard. <laughs> you have to put a lot of work in. And Darren said you get a lot of knockbacks. And Phil knows a lot of big words. So don't know whether it's going to be the career for me, juggling this and acting. So I'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks. And, you know, fingers crossed. Brilliant. <laughs> All right, Daz, what are you thinking? Uh, it was great to have you, mate, on the podcast. Um, football's getting getting better, getting back to normal. Um, defending's still shocking, but we'll get back to that eventually. But uh, it'd be great, lads. Uh, it's been a pleasure this week. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I also love the fact that he used words like nifty. Yeah. You've never had that before. We Nathan haven't. Maybe we could have a feature saying, you know, new word of the week. Yeah, just let's just not get Phil to make them up. <laughs> uh, so for uh, thanks for everyone that's uh, listened. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, we thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, you can watch us on YouTube, uh, listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Network, or visit the website at www.3menofootball.com. Send us your comments on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll try and keep giving you what you want. Football chat and a little bit of fun along the way. Uh, All right, lads. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye.